let's look at the next category, which is clubbing. By clubbing, what we're talking about is a more dangerous kind of glassing. Somebody picks up something that has a handle on it. It's not likely to be an actual club, statistically. Again, these things are rare, but it'll be something like a trophy, uh, a larger liquor bottle where you can hold it by the neck. Things like that are more common than actual clubs, but the motion of it will be the same. You need to know about these because they're everywhere. Anything that has a handle that the person can extend his reach makes it more powerful and more dangerous. So let's look at some of the defenses for clubbing. All right, we've been talking about clubbing. The most common clubs in uh, North America are hammers, anything you can hold with one hand. We're gonna use an actual club here, but remember, statistically, you're far more likely to be attacked by what you perceive as an in innocuous object, like a, a liquor bottle can be held by the, by the neck and has a lot of weight to it. We talked about uh, looking at which joints were moving fastest in the Crusada defense. Let's now take a look at which joints are closer to you and, and how the angle of the attack changes. This can give us an advantage if we're able to respond early. Now, the reason why your flinch reflex probably isn't going to be a problem in the same way and that you may have an opportunity to defend yourself earlier is because of the added length of the weapon. He's now going to have to attack you from further out a lot of the time. And this gives you a longer field of vision. It gives your brain uh, more stimulus and more time to understand what's going on. So you're less likely to have a flinch, either a good one or a bad one. So this may give you a fraction of a second longer to be able to assess the situation. Now, as he winds up to hit you, for this moment, if he winds up high, which he may very well do, you can see that his wrist is the farthest joint away from me, then his elbow, then his shoulder is actually closest to me. So if I don't have to, I shouldn't have to wait until the, the club is close to me and then try a defense. This is viable, but it's missing an opportunity. So as he winds up, his shoulder is closer to me and I may be able to defend there. But as he winds up far, again, we want to try to get a hold of that bicep first if we can. That's going to take the steam off it. So when we do this against punches, a lot of the time wrestlers refer to this as the cobra because it looks a little bit like a snake. What I'm doing is basically a slapping and hooking action and again I can go to my overhook. So again with this extra distance we have the flinch problem isn't as great, but we have a greater distance, so I need to be thinking about this in the same way as I would with a punch. The difference is I want to extend my reach. So as he winds up, yes, I could cover this the same way as a punch, but I want to try to maximize my reach. So as he winds up, I come in and try to get that cobra right on his bicep and slap down from here. I overhook the same way and pull it in tight. My priority is to make sure that I've jammed his initial attack so it's not as dangerous to me and I take away his capacity to hit me again. Now with a club here, everything's the same. I can do the combat or sotogeri. I could even go to other throws if I know them well enough. But there's another option. As soon as he has this longer thing, whether it's a hammer whether it's a bottle with a uh, long neck. The idea is the same. There's enough leverage here that I can use the weapon itself to take it out of his hand. And then you can see the situation that this sets up for him. So in the old days, when we did this defense, we would control here, but then we would move to the side in case he was pressuring off us, on us. And then we would step in front and we would do a hip toss. That's the classic way to uh, do a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu clubbing defense. You know, we start asking ourselves, what the hell for? Number one, like I've talked about several times, throws are skills in themselves that you may or may not be able to have the time to train. And it's a complex thing. When we throw each other in competition, a lot of the time we end up falling with the guy because there's so much weight behind it. So if you want to stay standing, sometimes throwing the guy isn't the best idea if your throws aren't at a really high level. And for most Jiu Jitsu people, Thank you.